It is Stanley's turn in the hot seat here at Stuga North on Lakeshore Boulevard. Where's my Butterfinger? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was really deep. I'm not sure if it would be. I, I feel like it would be a deep voice. voice. He does have yeah. a deep voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's sure. already getting cozy for this next segment. But, Stanley, it's time to get on the exam table with Dr. Tracy Nyberg. She's going to take us through what she looks at for in cats. You can get up on the table, though. You want to get up there? Yeah. I do. <laughs> Come here. That's you. Are you gonna weigh him? Yeah. Oh, I, I think guess. we should I don't weigh embarrass him. him though. Ugh. Obviously, Not he's a boy. he's a big boy. Um, a and Tia Tia's a little bit self conscious about his weight oh, because okay. she really takes good care of Stanley. I, I do, and I some, love him. But he's are just a big boy. Are some cats just bigger than others, some and that's are. normal? And some just have like much slower metabolism, okay. and it's. Like, I don't know if he could ever be a 10-pound cat. Sure. You know? I don't think so. Big. Some are built bigger. Because yeah. he was, when I got him when he was about one years old, and I he was like like 15 pounds yeah. when I got him then. So he was... I mean, he's about 17, big. and like when we are looking at our pets and kind of judging, let's get this scale away, um, judging their body weight and body condition. Um, I mean, we have to look at how the body shape is. We have yeah. to also... You know, can I feel his ribs? And I can. You know, where is his fat deposited? It's not really up here. It's more down like here. Clearly I know. Hang. He's also got a lot of fur. He does. He's very fluffy, I yep. know. And, you know, and then just talking about, like, if we did want to modify his diet, so I'm, like, asking, what do you feed? How do you feed it? What is his eating habit like? Um... You know, mm -hmm. how does that look like at home? Tia, how many lasagnas a day? Okay, yeah. no lasagnas oh, a day. Oh, okay, okay. Here's, here's their feeding habit. So I have another cat at home as well. Yeah. She is, she's so tiny. She's probably like six or seven pounds. Yeah. And I feed them the same amount. Sometimes yeah. I see him, you know, he'll try to kick her off of her <laughs> food yeah. dish and try to eat. Yeah. I have to shut it down. So, like, I watch yeah. them eat their food. But I give them both dry food in the morning about probably like a half cup or so yeah. i don't measure i just eyeball yeah. and then in the evening they split a, a three and a half ounce can of wet food yeah and then and that's that's yeah. their eating habit so they both eat the same food yeah. and i mean clearly they're two different weights different, so maybe yeah. i should consider maybe, a specialized or maybe doing like more wet food in the mm -hmm. morning versus yeah. the dry food that may help too um, but yeah, her metabolism sounds totally different than his does. Mm -hmm. um, I saw something when I was oh, just looking. You. Yeah, which this is something you never really look in a cat's mouth as much as you do a dog's mouth. Stanley probably needs um, some, dental, some work? dental work. Look at oh. that tooth. Look at that red gum. Oh wow! And we have a bad tooth back yeah, there. That's so why it's a stinky breath. That's the stinky breath and. Can we see this other sign? And that can cause a lot of problem for animals, right? If they that have an infected too. tooth. Yeah. Has he ever had a dental? No. He yeah, it can cause a lot of problems. So I do think he would really, I mean, he's such a good boy. And animals don't show us when something hurts very mm -hmm. readily. So um, that's why bringing them every year to the vet yeah. is important, too, because we do look at every little spot and, and um, see things sometimes. So... I do think he would really benefit from a dental. From and, a oh, and, mm -hmm. and so I just make a regular vet you appointment? Call, you would call the vet and say, hey, like I've noticed this in my cat's mouth. And, and they may want to look at it first and say, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. We should do a dental. And a lot of dentals, um, just because vets are so busy, are being booked like four to six weeks out. So, mm -hmm. And then it'd be where he comes in the morning, just like the animals back there. And he does go under anesthesia and gets x-rays just like people do and then probably some of those teeth will have to get extracted and then the rest of them cleaned up. Is that pretty normal with uh, as, as our it pets can, age yeah, to have teeth problem? Some, te some of them never have problems. Some have a dental every year. It just depends on like the overall health of their teeth and just the ability to fight off bacteria or just natural bacteria levels in their mouth just like some people never get cavities mm -hmm. and some people have tons of cavities sure. even though they take good care of their teeth so i wonder if it has anything to do with he is an fiv positive cat uh, he was when i got yeah. him so i don't know if that has anything to do yeah. with his teeth but. yeah yeah that's a virus that mm -hmm. he'll always carry and that does suppress his immune system so it really could yeah. okay well 
I'm glad that you brought Stanley in. Me too. And buddy, yeah. I'm really sorry if you've been in a lot of mouth pain and I didn't know. No he he does not look miserable, I just no. want to say. He okay. looks pretty darn content. So yeah. I don't think you have to feel too bad, Tia. You caught it early. You're going to get him some dental work yeah. and he's going to be right as rain in no time. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a break. We've got some results to check on with Murph and we're going to continue this show here with Tracy. Oh, I think he's going to be just fine.